the sun rising. Busy old fool, unruly sun, why dost thou thus through windows and through curtains call on us? Must to thy motions lovers' seasons run? Saucy pedantic wretch, go chide late schoolboys and sour apprentices. Go tell court huntsmen that the king will ride, call country ants to harvest offices. Love, all alike, no season knows, nor clime, nor hours, days, months, which are the rags of time. Thy beam so reverent and strong, why should thou think? I could eclipse and cloud them with a wink, but that I would not lose her sight so long. If her eyes have not blinded thine, look and tomorrow late tell me whether both the India of spice and mine beware thou lest them, or lie here with me. Ask for those kings whom thou sought yesterday, and thou shalt hear all here in one bed lay. She's all states and all princes I, nothing else is. Princes do but play us. Compared to this, all honours mimic, all wealth alchemy. Thou, son, art half as happy as we. In that the world's contracted thus, thine age asks ease, and since thy duties be to warm the world, that's done in warming us. Shine here to us, and thou art everywhere. This bed thy centre is, these walls thy sphere. This is an interesting poem. It's one of the love poems. Um, and John Donne is laying with his love in bed. And if you look at the very last line of the poem, he says, This bed thy centre is, these walls thy sphere. So really what he's saying there is that his bed is the centre of the universe. And... Um, and he's saying the rest of the world is out, um, you know, the walls represent the, the ends of the, the universe, really, or the world. Um, and, and he's really, uh, be he begins the poem um, with uh, quite an accusatory tone, um, but it's a mocking tone as well, where he's, he's castigating the sun for, for, for peeking through the window and disturbing his um, moment of uh, romance, I suppose, with his love. Um, and he says, Busy old fool, unruly son, why dost thou through windows and curtains call on us? Why, why are you coming and interrupting us? Must to thy emotions lovers' seasons run? And here he's saying that we shouldn't be dictated by you. Uh, and... and um, and then, then he goes on and, um, in an ironic sense and um, calls the son a saucy, pedantic wretch. You know, and that's um, quite ironic because the, the, the one who is more saucy is probably done himself. It's a reflection of him. And he, 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 um, he states to the son, he demands the son, go and, go and um, annoy schoolboys who are late and, and sour apprentices who are late for school and work and go and tell court huntsmen that the king will ride um, and call the country ants to the harvest. So go about your busy work is really what he's saying. Uh, you know, and that reflects this idea at the start of this busy old fool, the son being a, you know, uh, someone who um, doesn't really understand, just goes on with the, the busy routine. And in the red, uh, in the pink, sorry, just here, he makes a statement where he says that love all alike, no season knows, no clime, nor hours, days, months, which are the rags of time. So here he's saying that, you know, love doesn't know um, sunrise and sunset and it doesn't know the passing of seasons. It's It's timeless. And uh, he, he's, he's basically, um, he's using that the rags of time idea that to say that really time is, is really um, un, unnecessary in, in, in the grand scheme and, and that love is a far more fluid um, uh, concept and, and it's not to be dictated by time or anyone really. And then he moves on and he says, Thy beam so reverent and strong, why should thou think? 
I could eclipse and cloud them with a single wink. So here he's, he's um, challenging the sun and saying that, that all he has to do is close his eyes and he can, he can shut the sun out. And therefore he has control over, um, over the, the scenario. He's more powerful than the sun. And that reflects that idea that he believes he is the center of the universe and the most important thing in the universe. But he then follows this statement by saying, but that I would not lose her sight so long. And here is this statement of devotion to his love, that, that he won't close his eyes because he, um, he, he is so engrossed by his love that, that um, he, he can't bear to take his eyes off her. And over here I've stated that there is a mythological reference to Medusa and that her beauty blinds and it, it's, it's so compelling. And now um, he, he continues this idea by saying, if her bl eyes have not blinded yours, look and tomorrow late, tell me whether both Indias of spice and mine be where thou left them, or lie here with me. So he's really saying that he's more powerful than the impact that the sun can have on the world, and that, that his, uh, his notion of love and um, his world is, is far more important. And of course he's... he's um, over exaggerating the situation but that's to make the point um, and to to reflect the devotion that he has for his love and he says ask for those uh, kings whom thou saw yesterday and thou shalt hear all here in one in one bed lay so he's basically saying there that that all um, stately people will bend to to this notion of love and that that they they will um be impacted on by by dunn and and uh his his um important sense, sense of importance about his his uh his romance this next uh few lines is um, a real reinforcement of the the nature of the relationship and the devotion that he has to his love and he says she's all states and all princes I and nothing else is so he's, he there is that um, connection to the age of discovery uh, and that you know that England and other uh, countries in Europe were going out and uh, exploring and colonizing throughout the world and it was a sign of power so he's saying that she is uh, all powerful she's the state she's she's the crown um, and and Dunn is merely a prince a, a subject uh, of of the greater being and and nothing else is and that that's the reality that he's he's suggesting that <clears throat> that 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 is is suffice and and the intensity and um you know devotion of their love um is all that's necessary and then he states princes do but play us and so he's he's once again elevating the sense of importance that that um that um, those in the royal family, those who have um, power and position and and privilege, um, they really envy what what Dunn and his love have. So princes do but play us, and compared to this, all honours mimic and all wealth alchemy. So he's saying that that um, <clears throat> you know that concept of alchemy of of turning um, metal into gold. You know, it's 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 sort of like. Um, uh, it's it's magical, I suppose, and then <clears throat> there's a bit of a shift in tone, and and Dunn's a bit more um, considerate of the the son's position, and he says, "Thou son are half as happy as we," <clears throat> and I suppose there is a little link to um, the sort of well, there's a similar notion to in death be not proud where. Uh, Dunn begins in a, a really mocking tone, uh, and then and then softens and takes pity on on uh, death as well. <clears throat> so if we go back to um, this this line here, thou son are half as happy as we, in that the world's contracted thus, 
thine age asks ease, and since thy duties be to warm the world, that's done in warming us. So he's saying here, I pity you, son, because your job is, um, you, know, you are um, you are a servant to, to the earth, and you must spend your whole time uh, running around busily and, and warming the world. Okay, so... <clears throat> Coming back to this idea of the bed being the, the center of the universe, he's suggesting that the sun runs around and and um, uh, and revolves around. Done. It's not the other way. That he, he doesn't bend to um, the the rise and fall of the sun. The rise and fall of the sun uh, is is uh, a servant to him. Okay. <clears throat> And here at the end he says, Shine here to us, thou, and thou art everywhere, this bed thy centre, and these walls thy sphere. So we have a sort of, um, once again, that um, paradoxical sort of nature. And it's sort of like a conceit, I suppose, that the square walls of the room are the sphere, the roundness of the globe. Uh, and we've seen that in other poems as well. Up the top here, I've stated that the sun is a symbol of self knowledge and um, and that you know we can read into the, um, the poem in, in that manner. But we can also see that the sun is um, symbolic of God. Um, it is a, um, a, a manifestation of God. And and then if we read the poem in that sense, I suppose we can look at the poem and say that done in bed with his love, he he's really uh, preoccupied with. Um, the, his mortal um, status at the moment and he's saying go away and come back when I'm ready for you uh, to God we can we can look at it in that sense and he wants to make the most out of his um, his relationship now and 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 live his life to the full i suppose and it's these simple moments that he can really um enjoy and and uh, allow to linger and and he's sort of saying that he will dictate and determine when it's time for him to to uh join join um god in a, a more spiritual sense and <clears throat> And, and so this is an interesting way of looking at it and that that it's when we get to this point of the poem here that we see that the, the tone does shift and that he um, he is thinking that that you are everywhere um, and that that it's, it's not the the um, the real extent that that um, the son is a, a servant um, more at the end here. He, he's asking the sun to shine over them and it's just reaffirming his uh, Christian belief <clears throat> and his um, his faith and that um, he, he he recognizes that the God is everywhere and that that um, he is um, devoted to to his God so we're moving from a, a physical sense in the top of the poem where he's thinking about um, the physical relationship that he's having, um, but now we're talking about the spiritual or the, the metaphysical relationship that he's having with his God. Um, and, and this comes across in a, in a number of the love poems that I talk about the physicality and then they then he he, um, he he talks about the relationship that he has with God as well um, in a spiritual sense uh, a valediction forbidding mornings are a good one for looking at that the difference between the the physical love and then the spiritual <clears throat> 